What went wrong with Britain's economy? The British economy faces a crisis due to severe storms causing a turbulent social and economic vortex. The government services are sinking and the administration struggles to provide the necessary support. The economic earthquake has led to the crumbling walls of prosperity, trapping the nation in distress. The deeper rooted problems are far more ominous, highlighting the country's long-standing issues. Explore Britain's darkness, uncovering a grim future with uncertainty and grit for citizens. Examining how the once mighty nation has stumbled so far, are you prepared to face the dark side of Britain? The UK has been facing a tough time, not just this year, but over the past decade. If we take a step back and look at the bigger picture, we'll see that it has been a rough ride. Since 2008, the UK has witnessed sluggish economic growth and a decline in living standards. The gap between rising prices and stagnant wages has led to a decrease in average income, leaving people worse off than they were 10 years ago. And if we delve deeper into the statistics, it gets even more worrying. Child poverty has increased, violent crime rates have gone up, and almost 9% of British households are concerned about having enough food. This is disconcerting, considering that the UK is one of the wealthiest countries in the world. And unfortunately, matters seem to be getting worse, especially with the arrival of 2020. The economy is heading into a recession, wages are stagnating, and inflation is soaring. It's a perfect storm of economic trouble. But how did the UK end up in this predicament? Well, there are three key reasons, all stemming from decisions made in the past. Let's explore them further. Firstly, we need to rewind to the 1970s. A period similar to the one the UK is currently experiencing. Back then, the country faced a radical transformation of its economy. It was marred by waves of strikes and protest, earning it the nickname Sick Man of Europe. The economic situation was dire to the point that the UK had to seek a bailout from the International Monetary Fund to avoid a complete collapse. This tumultuous period laid the groundwork for some of the challenges the country faces today. Now let's move on to the second reason. In the 1980s, under the leadership of Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, the UK underwent a process of economic liberalization with a focus on deregulation, privatization, and reducing the power of trade unions. While these measures were intended to boost the economy, they also led to increasing levels of income inequality and regional disparities. The effects of Thatcher's policies are still being felt today, with certain areas and sectors struggling to recover and thrive. Lastly, the third reason can be traced back to the decision made in 2016 to leave the European Union, commonly known as Brexit. The protracted and complex negotiations surrounding Brexit have created uncertainty and instability, impacting businesses and investors. This uncertainty has had a knock-on effect on the wider economy, resulting in decreased investment, reduced consumer confidence, and a general sense of unease. The consequences of Brexit are yet to fully unfold, but they have undoubtedly played a part in the UK's economic woes. Once upon a time, in the enchanting land of Great Britain, a brave and audacious leader named Margaret Thatcher emerged on the political stage. With an unwavering determination to revive her beloved country's economy, she devised a revolutionary plan that would make heads turn and hearts flutter. As fate would have it, when Thatcher ascended to the throne of Prime Minister, she wasted no time in unleashing a whirlwind of economic reforms that left both pundits and citizens spellbound. Picture this, she waved her magical wand, and tax cuts appeared, swiftly followed by the enchanting deregulation of the entire economy and financial markets. But that was not all, oh no! Thatcher had a much bigger trick up her sleeve. Her transformative measures, including privatizing state-owned assets and companies, aimed to revive the British economy and stimulate economic activity. Despite criticism, her reforms led to a dazzling two decades of economic growth, fueled by sectors like finance, banking, and property development. The British economy outpaced its G7 counterparts, with sectors like finance, banking, and property development benefiting from Thatcher's reforms. Critics accused her of dismantling British heavy industry and over-relying on the financial and real estate sectors. Despite criticism, Thatcher's magic continued to work, and unless a crisis hit the financial sector, the dazzling growth would not cease. And thus, amidst the clash of opinions and the lingering aroma of a controversy, Thatcher's captivating economic exploits etched themselves in the annals of British history. 
love her or loathe her, there was no denying that this fearless and visionary leader breathed new life into a once dormant realm, leaving her mark on the land and its people for years to come. Back in 2008, the UK got smacked by the global financial crisis and it was like a game of dominoes. All the crucial sectors tumbled down, causing serious damage to the entire economy. Now don't get me wrong, the UK was not the only one to suffer, but here's the twist. While other countries managed to bounce back, the UK remained stuck in a productivity rut. So what's this productivity business all about? Well, it's basically about how much economic magic people can create in one measly hour of work. And here comes the shocker. Apart from the fancy financial sector, the UK is lagging far behind its usual competitors like Germany and even France. To add insult to injury, this productivity gap keeps widening every damn year. Sure, the Brits might be putting in longer hours than their European buddies, but the sad truth is, all that extra sweat isn't translating into effective results. Now, let's not blame everything on the financial crisis alone. The UK also had its own unique way of dealing with the aftermath. And guess what? It turned out to be another ingredient in this stew of problems the country is now trying to ladle out. Following the financial crisis of 2008, the UK government decided to tackle the situation with a policy known as austerity. Fancy name, right? Well, it essentially meant slashing public spending in nearly every area where the government invests its money. And boy, were these cuts extreme. Funding for the police, social services, welfare programs, and local governments all took a massive hit. To make matters worse, funding for vital sectors like healthcare and education has practically been stuck at the same level since 2008. Now here's the twist. Unlike most countries that loosen their purse strings after a few years, the UK decided to keep the party going and stuck with austerity for the long haul. But guess what? This prolonged policy of belt tightening has had some downright devastating effects on British society, particularly on the hardworking folks simply trying to make ends meet. The United Nations has some strong words to say about the UK's policy of austerity. They claim that it has caused a lot of poverty and unhappiness, especially for those with lower incomes. Just take a look at the number of people using food banks. It has gone from 25,000 to a whopping 1 million in just a few years. And don't get me started on child poverty. It's on the rise as well. But it doesn't stop there, folks. Our beloved National Health Service, the NHS, is in dire straits. It's so underfunded that we now have the worst access to health care in all of Europe. Yikes. And guess what? Our police force has been slashed by a whopping 20,000 officers, leaving them unable to properly do their job. No wonder we're seeing an increase in violent crime, especially in poorer areas. And brace yourself for more bad news. The government is doubling down on austerity, introducing even more cuts to our already underfunded public services. Can you believe it? This has sparked strikes from everyone, from nurses and doctors to firefighters and rail workers. They're shouting from the rooftops that this is simply unsustainable. So my friends, as much as we love the UK, we can't ignore the fact that it's going through some seriously tough times. The combination of underfunding, Brexit, and the ongoing economic meltdown has cast a dark shadow over our future. Great Britain doesn't seem all that great anymore. That's all for the video today. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.